house just go ahead and talk to God you are it's not my you are my everything Lord it's not my ambition Lord you are my everything Lord it's nothing Lord but you you are the reason why I'm living oh God you are my everything Lord you are my everything Lord Jesus my life is fast in you Lord Jesus I will do your will oh Lord Jesus you are my everything only you I live for oh Lord I live for your praise on the head I live for your glory you are my everything let's go ahead and talk to our father Lord you are my everything with you I can do so much more than I can ever imagine when I'm weak then I'm strong because of you you are my everything you are my everything blessed be your holy name Lord Jesus we appreciate you Lord in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Father, we are saying together tonight that you are our everything. With you, we have everything. Father, we hand over everything that we have ever held on to as our own. We hand them over to you tonight. And we lay hold on to your own eternal purpose. Father, please accept us in the name of Jesus. Receive us unto yourself. And Lord, empower us for the purpose in the name of Jesus. As we have made up our mind to walk on the path of our destiny, Lord. We shall not be weak and we shall not be small upon the head in the name of Jesus. Father, please speak your word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Hallelujah. Let us be honorably seated in God's presence. Amen. We are bold tonight. We are courageous tonight. We are confident tonight because of your faith in what God is said to do here. Imagine everything that has happened. Somebody could have said, ah, what am I waiting for? See the way the whole thing is going. But you have chosen to stay. You know, what as she was talking, she was talking about our choices, how they ultimately determine our destiny. You have made the right choice tonight. And my prayer is that God, who sees your heart, will reach you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate our presence here. I want to thank everyone. There are faces that I'm seeing here that I'm naturally scared. I want to thank you for being here, sir. Uh, I also appreciate the presence of my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, my, my uncle. I have people here. And I also appreciate each and every one of us. We had a session in the morning. Some people were here. Very few people. But I believe it was a, a good time in the presence of God. The Lord who started with us yesterday. And who took us forward this morning. Is here tonight. And he has assured me that. As much of desire. As much of passion. I don't know the word to use for that passion. As much of hunger and thirst that we have tonight that is yet to actually satisfy them. I don't know whether you have ever imagined yourself being beside an ocean or you've been beside a stream of water. You know that the quantity of the, the water in those two places are different. He assured me, my spirit, that we have actually come to the ocean of his presence and what we will go with will be determined by what we have brought to his presence. So I want you to open your heart to him. He's here to meet you at the point of your need. And um, we will not live here the way we came in Jesus' name. We are here for Purpose and Destiny Conference. And we started yesterday by exposing in a little way the meaning of life. Because we believe that whatever you will live your life the way you see it. That was our understanding yesterday. Your life can never be different from your understanding of life. In fact, if you think life is about survival of the fittest, you will bring
lay down other people for you to rise up. You will never believe you can rise on your own without anybody coming down. How you see life will determine how you live life. And how you live your life will determine the destiny ahead of you. You cannot live your life in one way and expect another destiny. And yet, your destiny is so important that you can't afford to miss it. And so we must have the right understanding of life. I pray that the Lord will build on what he has shared with us yesterday, tonight in Jesus' name. You know, before I was thinking tonight would be also be a teaching session. But it might be adding a little bit of preaching. So just pardon the dimension that the Holy Spirit decides to go. You know, we said the vision of this conference is not just to impart you with knowledge. Because we have discovered that many people know what to do. Sometimes what is lacking is how to do it. Sometimes I have discovered that some people know that I, have, I am wired for this. In fact, what I'm wired for is different from what I'm busy doing. But the question is what is keeping them doing it? That is what I expect God to deal with tonight. I'm not just trusting God to show you your purpose. I want God to empower you to do it. You know, at a point in the life of Jesus, he was confronted, he was confronted with the decision of life and destiny. He knew before coming to the earth that he needed to die for you and I to be saved. But at a moment in his life, it was like, <laughs> the purpose of my life is becoming heavy. Lord, would you, can you please take this cup, let this cup, cup pass over me? You know, I used to tell some people that um, a scripture could look like a flow, something that just happened maybe in seconds. I, I believe it wasn't seconds. I believe there was a time frame. I believe there were moments in, the, in, the, in, that, in that particular encounter that he had on the mountain. There were moments where he felt so heavy. And he was like, ah, how shall I do this? How shall this be done? Then suddenly, an understanding that God beyond this, that God beyond the natural came upon him that it is not my, my reason for living is not for my own will. Not my will, oh Lord, but thy be done. There will be times when things will appear difficult for you to do. Yet, you must do them. Those are moments where you must humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he should exhort you. It is not easy to fulfill purpose. You need an empowerment for God. In the book of Micah, I want us to... There's a place in the book of Micah, I'm not too sure of the chapter, either Micah 3 or something. Where the scripture talk, the scripture was talking about the Messiah that was to come. And the scripture says, He will stand to feed the flock of the Lord in the strength of the Lord. And I got an understanding from it. The reason why God sent Jesus to the earth was not just to save a people unto God, He was also supposed to shepherd them. So He came to save, He came to shepherd. But do you know He needed to do it not by might, not by strength? But by the Spirit, Bible says, He shall stand to feed the flock of the Lord in the strength of the Lord. So, brother, no matter how difficult the purpose you are beginning to sense may be, it can be done. Jesus said, With men, these things may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So, don't be afraid to seek for understanding of your purpose. Do not think your purpose will also be small. If it is small, it is not from God. Your purpose will be big. And usually you will not be able to do it alone. You must be empowered by the one who has given you the purpose. Okay, for instance, imagine you being a CEO of a business and you have a team of people working with you. You are the CEO, you have access to the finance of the company. They collect salary, they, they get instructions from you, they accomplish them. Then imagine you telling some of them or one of them that please do this for me. Please do this for me. Will the person have to struggle on the means of doing it? For instance, if you ask a man to dig a ground for you, are you not supposed to give him something to dig it? When he's through digging it, will you not encourage him by giving him some reward? Just take a look at people that are working in different organizations. The tools that they use to operate are supplied by their employers. Do you think God will commit a purpose to you and, be, and leave you to find out what you will use? No. 
he will give you the tools to use and he will empower you to use them. That is how, how God is different from every other employer. An employer will give you a job to do and back, go back to see how you do it. Or those, most of them will give you what you will need. But they will go back. Our God is different from them. He will give you what to do as work. He will give you the tools and he will stay with you. For it is God that walketh in you and I, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That good pleasure is the purpose of God for your life. Yesterday we started by understanding life. And we also gained some understanding of destiny. We discovered that your, that your destiny is not just a place to get to in life, but a person to become. Towards getting there and becoming it, the Lord is expected. I mean, the Lord is, is committed to helping you. What a wonderful God we have. I don't, I don't know whether you understand this. God is giving you, do this for me, and he's staying there to help you do it. Somebody will want to go back and see how you do it and say, can you see? First class, see what you are doing. But God will not just say first class, God will help you to do it. Imagine God filling Jesus with everything about God. And yet, God stood with him to do it. As I say my father do, I do. Whatever I hear from my father, I say, my judgment is true. Will your work or the dealings, your dealings in your place of work be true? Will it be effective? Will it be efficient? Will people say you are an efficient person in your place of work? Will people say you are true? You are good? If they will say that, it is because the father that committed that thing into your hand is helping you to do it. Please let us get this. If you find your purpose, you will never struggle to do it. You are struggling to do anything that you have not found as your purpose. <laughs> okay. This is just by the way. Please don't smile too much and don't laugh. At the early phase of my life, earlier phase of my life, before I got married, I used to tell myself that ah, my wife must be as tall as I am or a little bit close. If you are short, I won't even look at you. But do you know, when it was time for me to know the person, God started dealing with me. That is not about height. I started, he started telling me that, in fact, the woman I will marry is not tall as I am tall. Or as tall as I am. Ah. <laughs> if you know that, imagine a man all his life fixing his mind on, this is the kind of woman I'm looking for. And God is saying, your wife is, a, is not going to be a tall woman, but it's going to be somebody that you are taller than. Imagine me having to now love the person. I did not love the person by my, stre by my strength. He empowered me to love. Do you know why? When he told me, your wife is not tall as you are, I, I, I forgot that principle of height. Then suddenly, I started appreciating people irrespective of their height. See, if you check yourself everywhere, you are struggling to accept the will of God for your life, even in marriage, because... You, you, you have not yet gotten the reward. You can't get a word from God that this is the person you will marry and you will still be telling me you don't love it. Do you know why you will love it? It's not because he will force you. He will help you to love it. God will help you to love your purpose. God will help you not just to love it but to do it. You will be committed to your husband or your wife not because you are a committed person, you know, you know, but because by the empowerment of God, you are committed. Amen. You know, there's a place in the book of Psalms when David was talking about him. That, Lord, if I look at another woman, if I do this, Lord. You know, he was vouching for himself. He was just telling God, I am an, a, man, I'm a man of a good integrity. But there was a moment in his life when kings were fighting when he was supposed to be in the battle front and he was walking and he saw another woman the mother of Solomon and he lost after her now what is the difference between a man that said God literally what he said was if I lost after a woman God just kill me uh, if I lost me lost after a woman me never now there's a difference between you telling yourself I can do something there's a difference between God helping you to do it your purpose is not something that you will just be telling yourself, you see, I'm just good. Wake me up anytime. It has to be by divine empowerment. 
I'm not going to tell you your purpose is this. You know, when you just wake up, you will do it. When you wake up without God, who gave you that purpose, you will not do it easily. You will still struggle. But he has empowered you to do it naturally. You also require spiritual empowerment to do it easily. That is, in fact, in my spirit, that is the reason for today. Yesterday started with us telling us about purpose. You know, you, you know your purpose will preserve you. If you can find it, focus on it, you will be preserved. That is good. And that is the truth. But always focusing on your purpose. You need God. There are many distractions everywhere. After I graduated from school, NYC and all the rest, I, I felt that I could do many things. I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. But do you know, if you tell yourself, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, in the long run, you will do nothing well. Because you will want to try this. I, could, I can do it, but you know, there's a desire in me that wants to do this. You drop it. Ah, I'm just good at this. In the long run, you see another thing. But do you know it's because you've not really found your purpose? If you find your purpose, you will face it and you will finish it by the help of God. Don't be a jack of all trade. Your purpose is usually Jesus said, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work you have given to me. He didn't say I have finished the works. He even said the work. So you must know the work that God has given to you. The question is, has God even given you a work? So let us go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Uh, sorry, ma. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 1 for us? Uh, you, are, you are loud. Uh, start from verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed the. Just verse 4. Start from 4. Okay. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ha, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am only a youth, for you shall go to her to whom I shall send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms to whose house and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Uh, may God bless that word in our spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. I know we, know we are familiar with that scripture. But, you know, what usually bats revelation is you telling yourself, I could be familiar with this, but there's a word for me. Don't just go through the scripture and just say, ah, I can cram it, I can tell anybody. No, open Jeremiah 4 from verse 6. You must go over it over and over again and let the Lord speak to you. Now it says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You know, we are talking about <laughs> us accepting or realizing that a work has even been given to us. You know, we said, has a work even been given to you? Now, he said, before I formed you. You know, God said, what I say to one, I say to all. You know, you cannot expect God. God is not a talkative, although he can tell you again what he has told other people. But Bible says, God has spoken once. I had it twice. That power belongs to God. Our God is not, is not like all those gods that do not have mouth to speak. He can speak, but because of his nature and every other thing that surrounds his personality, he, he speaks in eternity. You know, we are born, we go through life, and we die. The Lord does not die. So when he speaks, unlike us, that we speak momentary, we speak for the moment, he speaks in eternity. You must find your own in the internal word of God. And you remember when Peter said, ah, Jesus said, are you, why are you here? Jesus delivered a powerful message and instead of the disciples saying, oh, Lord, help me, they said, oh, 
This is a hard saying. Who shall believe this? And they left him. And Jesus turned to the twelve. Are you not going? And they said, Peter said, to whom shall we go? You are the one that has the word of eternal life. We are talking about the eternal word of God. And so when God speaks, he speaks in eternity. You must take responsibility to draw your word in the eternity for your generation. You remember when God spoke in uh, true prophet Joel. And in the book of Acts, chapter 2, Peter literally drew the hand of the word of God to his time. He said, this is what was spoken by prophet Joel. This is what God spoke by prophet Joel. God spoke thousands of years before then. And yet the man of God said, today, what you are seeing now is what God said. You must get to a point in your life that you open the book of Isaiah and you say, this is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord said, but this is what the Lord is saying. In the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus went to the synagogue and the Bible says they gave him the book to read. And the Bible says he found a place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Then he began to list it to preach, to heal, to set at liberty. He began to list them. You must find a place. You must find your place in the word of God. This man said, God spoke concerning this Jeremiah. But do you know that if the Lord quickens your spirit and your spirit is sensitive, you could get a word here for yourself. And it will be as if they wrote your name. Boyega Adedeji. You can see your name there. It will be as if they wrote your name. And do you know there is a spirit in man, according to the book of Job, there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty which gives him understanding. You know, we started yesterday that for with you is the fountain of life. And in your light, we see light. There is the light that must be made available for us to have our own light. That was what we said yesterday. So you must be able to recognize the word of the Lord to you tonight. He says, before you were born, when you were right in the womb, before you even got to the womb of your mother, I knew you. Then the question is, in what condition did God know you? God knew you as a spirit that not become uh, yes. And he gave you a purpose as a spirit. That is the problem that most men have. We got purpose as spirit. Now we are living in earthen vessels and we get a little bit disconnected from our real person. You read in the book of uh, Genesis where God formed man. Bible says God formed man from the dust of the ground. We know what God formed was the body. And Bible says God breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. The man that God gave responsibility to is the spirit man. And because the spirit is there, the body is also there, the soul is there, it now becomes cumbersome for the man to even identify himself. We must be one in spirit, soul and body. Let your body and your soul align with the leadership of the Spirit of God on your spirit. So, he said, before you were born, I knew you. I knew you. And I assigned you a responsibility. And the man said, ah, Lord. Hey, I cannot speak. I'm a youth. Hmm. At the point, God told him, don't look at their faces. I've given you power to uproot. I've given you power to build. Can you be saying amen in your spirit that God has given you power to uproot? God has given you power to build. I've given you power to plant. I've given you power to sow. I've given you power to do my will. Don't fear their faces. The purpose of God could make you to, to confront the authorities of your generation. Are you going to be a fearful man or you will be like the apostles that said to the authorities of the day. Judge among yourselves. Whom we will we obey? Whether to obey God or you or men. What gave them such courage? They knew whom they believed. They knew. They were so sure. Imagine Jesus telling Peter, do you love me more than this? He said, yes. Do you love me more than this? He said, yes. Do you love me more than this? He said, feed. Feed my sheep. A man that got such a definite assignment from God would he not stand before men and say, Hey, 
although I've been told to do this, but uh, since you are saying we should not do it, in the book of Acts chapter 4, when they were confronted by the authorities again, Bible says they threatened them. They said among themselves, it is obvious that these people are doing great works. That they are doing mighty things is no doubt. But that is pressed no further. Let us threaten them. So that you will not be threatened in life. You must gain a, a firm grip of your purpose. Your purpose will make you bold. You are not bold because you have not known that is the reason why you are living. Why will Martin Luther King dear the authorities of his time? If he was ignorant of his purpose. He even said that what he sees, he, will, he might not get there. In fact, he was not going to get there. But it will surely happen. When will you tell yourself that what God has shown me as purpose, I will start it but I might not finish it. But I will pursue it with my life. At what point will you see death and you will say, <laughs> you can only take me when I'm true. Can you count the number of attempted murder on the life of Jesus when he was on earth? Some of us sometimes we have grown so high in the spirit that we think because we are men of God, we can attempt on our lives cannot be made. Attempt can be made on your life, but they will not succeed. They will surely gather, but they will fail. Why will they fail? Why will God commit himself to your safety? It's because you have committed your life to his purpose. You have abandoned your own ambition. You have, Peter said, ah, we have left all. Now we followed you. What shall we have? And Jesus is not an hypocrite that will say, you see, when you get to heaven, you will get everything. Jesus said, in this world, you will have a hundredfold. And in the world to come, there is inheritance for you here on earth. There is for you in, in time to come. You know, they say teachers have their reward in heaven. If you find your purpose, your reward, is begin, your reward begins on the earth. Imagine Daniel. The angel of the Lord had to be talking to him. You see, go and sleep for a while. You see, you will, be, you will rise up again to take your inheritance. When will you get to a point where you have so much done the will of God and the angel of the Lord will be telling you, you see, by tomorrow morning you will die. Uh, prepare yourself. Uh, go and rest a while. Your reward is already waiting for you. Just go and rest. We will call you back later. And you will not be saying, Lord, Lord, please remember the good things I've done for you. Please give me another 15 years. Please don't be like Zachariah. <laughs> Ezekiel. No, Ezekiah. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Don't be like him. Because do you know why I do not like him? In my Bible, one Bible I used before, I wrote disastrous leader. Imagine a man that God said, prepare your house because he will go. And he said, Lord, remember every good thing I've done for you. Please, I don't want to go. Why will you be begging for your life? When your God is saying he wants to take you. If you've done well enough, you should be able to rest. And do you know he stayed because the man of the Lord had to come back again because of the word of the Lord. He said, go and tell him I've added another 15 years to his time. Check what he did with that 15 years. He messed up everything. A kingdom that was not their ally, even if they were their ally, you are supposed to understand military strategy. He brought envoy from the enemy nation to come and see their secret. And the man of the Lord came to him, what have you done? Ah, he said, eh, they came, I showed them around. Ah, you see, because of what you have done, your nation will be taken away in captivity. He said, as long as it doesn't happen in my time. Is it good? What legacy was he leaving behind? That is why we should not be like him. Leave a legacy behind. When you go, don't scatter the home. Don't let the head be bad after you have left. Let us have something for us to draw with. When I'm saying us, don't, I'm not saying that you go before me. I'm not talking about the arrangement. I'm talking about the generations that you will leave behind. Please, if you find your purpose, not if, by the grace of God, all of us will know our purpose. When you are found or while fulfilling your purpose, don't try to be thinking of death or negotiating with death. You have no dealings with death. The scripture says, death, where is your this? Where is your string? Ah, where is your power? He left captivity captive. He gave gift unto men. Is that not the book of uh, Ephesians? Chapter 4. And he gave gift unto men. 
God is able to <laughs> put your, the enemies of your destiny in captivity. Why should you now be fearing them when death cannot even kill Job until they take permission from God? Why will they take your life? God said, you can touch everything about Job, but don't, dare not touch his life. Take anything, don't take his life. So, do you think the devil can take your life or death can take your life before your time? But we will say the last, the last person that will be judged is the death. Death will be judged. So, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a being under the subjection or under the authority of God. Who did disobey God to take a man that is fulfilling his purpose on earth? Apostle Paul said, my time of departure has come. If your time has not come, they could attempt on your life. You will not leave the head. So, please, Set to it. You will not die. You will not die. We came from Abuja yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, and I'm not too good as a driver, but I drove. There is something that's supposed to tell me, do you know if you die, you won't minister? And, uh, why can't you? Must you go? Must you drive? Must you? Uh. But I was confident that if, as, the, as much as the Lord has commanded this program, I will come and go back. We must have that same mind. Some of us are sat on a, the same spot in fear of death. Do you remember that story in uh, the book of Kings where the Israelites were besieged by the Assyrian and there was famine and the man of God prophesied and the man that was close to the king said, how shall these things be? Even if the Lord opens the windows of heaven, shall these things be? God, man of God said, you will see it but you will not enter into it. You will not partake of it. How did that miracle get realized or fulfilled? A people that were chased out of the city, the leprous people, they, 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 they were more or less at the border waiting for death. The people in the city rejected them. Now, if they go back to the city, they might be killed. If they go to the enemies who had surrounded the city, they might be killed. But they said, why sit we here till we die? If we sit here, we will die. If we go, we will die. But there's a chance that if we go, they might forgive us and give us food. And as they did, the Bible says, the Lord caused this, their steps. You know, people that cannot walk very well, God still caused their steps. Very few men to be standing like a mighty army. And as they were taking a step, one step or the other, the enemies felt multitudes of soldiers were coming and they ran away with all their spoils. Overnight, Prices change. Imagine us buying petrol for two naira. You know, <laughs> imagine a prophecy that causes the well of every person's house in Nigeria to be having petrol, refined petrol. <laughs> it's possible, as you have said, it's possible. Your purpose it will be possible and shall be possible. Please, they made the decision. I, 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 I have, I have. Had this challenge in my life, and you must not have it. There is a great force pressing people down from fulfilling their purpose. If you think your purpose is so simple, then why have you not known it? If you think your purpose is so harmless to the, to the devil and the world system, how come you knew it? You have never done anything about it. There are people that know that God would have them start something on their own. Yet they struggle working somewhere else. And you ask them, why are you here? Ah, ah. For instance, imagine a man that is working in a bank. He got housing loan, car loan, <laughs> I'm almost saying marriage loan. <laughs> Please, will he ever leave that bank, even if the Lord appeared to him? When God speaks to you, that, see, don't worry. There was a, let me just share this testimony. There was a time... Uh, I receive grace to share it in Jesus' name. There was a time we were, we were just moving from one house to a house, one house to a house, renting houses. And there was a time my wife just told me that, do you know there's a particular loan in the office? Uh, the money is not big like that, but uh, if you get that loan, we were supposed to pay for 25 years or so. Imagine my life. <laughs> It was so, in fact, we were almost, almost beginning to plan how we will use it. Now, the now says, see, this house, before you rent it out, after you build it, you, we must know. You cannot sell it without us knowing. You know, when I studied the terms, I told her that this is another bondage. 
We are almost renting our own house until we have paid in 25 years. And guess how much they wanted to... The money is less than 4 million. They wanted to be collecting 50-something thousand every month. If you check what they will collect, it's going to be closing to either 10 million or more in 25 years. What? Bondage. Do you know from the time we had that experience and we made the decision that we will wait on God to build. We will not borrow to build. God has actually helped us. That's the summary. God has helped us without bank loan. I don't know whether you get it. You know, the word system we have arrangement for you. But maybe you don't know the implication of the testimony I just shared. Now, <laughs> she's working somewhere and she's comfortable, but she knew before she started the work that she must leave the place of work at the terms of God, not at terms. So, they are both discussing. I'm waiting for her to join me fully. Now, do you know the implication of her taking that loan? For 25 years, she will remain with the organization. There are some decisions we are taking now that will determine our destiny, but because they appear, they appear, they are quoted. We just say, ah, 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 I need this, oh, ah, if I don't get this, I won't survive. Your decision can tie you down in life. Your decision can set you loose. Don't make a decision that will make fulfilling purpose the most impossible, impossible thing in your life. Don't accept your hands to be tied when it's not your purpose. You see, Jesus came to fulfill purpose. The devil came or was around to stop him. See, the devil will always attempt to stop him. When he attempts once and he fails, he doesn't rest. He will come back again. He will come back again. And the devil said, if you are the son of God, if your purpose is to represent God on earth, turn this bread to stone. <laughs> and just said, man shall not live by bread alone. He said, if your purpose is to do this. If, you know, Jesus, he was indirectly questioning the purpose of Jesus. If you are truly the son of God, do this. Jesus said, no. If you are, okay, he took him to the highest place and said, see, see the glory of the kingdoms. Everything has been delivered to me. If you can bow down to me, I will give it to you. <laughs> Somebody will say, hey, why can't you just bow down? Maybe you just bow down once. I know it's perpetual. You bow down once, you remain bowed. Jesus said, no. I can only worship God. I should only worship God and him alone. <laughs> just go away. Do you know that thing that the devil wanted to give him? Give him in quotes. Do you know Jesus Christ actually stripped him naked and collected him without his permission? You have a purpose. And the devil will come to you that this is how to do it. And she be finally you've now accepted it, Abby. Okay? You see, your purpose is good, though, but this is how to do it. Imagine the devil helping you to do your purpose. <laughs> you know, is it a reform that said that... Um, when you don't manage your destiny, others will manage it for you. But usually they will manage it for their own selfish interest. Devil has an interest as much as God has an interest on it. Your purpose is against the interest of the devil. And when you adopt a strategy towards fulfilling your purpose, even though you've accepted your purpose and you have begun it, you will never get the result that God expects of you. It is not enough to know your purpose. Hey, God has called me to help students. What is that purpose? Fine, you have known it. How did God give it? Uh, what instruction did God give to you on how to do it? You must follow the instruction to the letter. Do you know Jesus Christ sent the disciples out two by two? He told them, when you get to this land, in this place, do this. When they do not receive you, receive you, dust the gun. Go to another place. You would not have gone through the whole land of Israel before I come back. He gave them not only the mission, he gave them the strategy. Go and do this. This is how you will do it. The same thing with our purpose. When he tells you as a woman that you are, your purpose is to help your man fulfill the purpose I've given him. Ah, and you say, hey, okay, I will help him. I will help him. You will not just help him. You must help him the way he tells you to help him. There is a kind of help you will do. In the long run, you are helping yourself. And God never gave you a purpose to help yourself. He said, help him. I will give you a helper that is suitable. It is not good for a man to be alone. I will give him a help 
that is suited for him. There is a purpose that God has given to that man and God must give him a woman, a, a help that will suit that purpose. And you must not help him in your own way. You will get your own results. You will get to your own destination. Not God's destination for your life. You must help the way God created you to help. Sorry, are you, are you hearing? <laughs> it looks as if I was not hearing. Amen. Amen. Is the Lord talking to us tonight? Please never think I'm talking to you. Number one, I do not know you very well. Number one, I did not create you at all. I didn't know when you were born. And I do not have an idea of when you will go. How you will be, who you will be when you will go, I do not know. So I am not in a position to help you. They came to the king. When the enemy beseeched Israel, help, O oh king, help, O oh king. He said, where can I find help for you? From the wine press or from the threshing floor. If the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? The Lord must help you. If the Lord does not help you, I cannot. So please, you are listening to God. He might be making use of my hands or my mouth, but you are listening to him. The moment you think you are listening to me, you will stop learning anything from him. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Please, your purpose is important to God. The devil does not fear you, he fears your purpose. You abandon your purpose, you are his ally. Please, do you know the life of Gideon very well, the story of Gideon? Gideon was hiding from the enemies. Gideon was a good man, hardworking, but was hiding from his purpose. Please, did, was he ever written that the enemies came looking for him, wanted to kill him, while he was hiding? You are not known because your purpose is not known to you. If you know your purpose, you will be known to the world. The enemy, Bible says, Jesus, the, the demon possessed, they say, Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? You have not known your purpose. You are trying to do the work of Paul. The enemy must know you. Why? Because you know your purpose. I don't claim ignorance of the devil. I don't claim the devil does not know me. I don't. <laughs> you know, when I was on campus, I used to be in a drama group. And uh, in those days, sir, <laughs> in those days, when my mother heard that I have been given a role, usually I was usually given some dangerous roles. You know, I mean, we just come in, maybe when I go home to greet her, we were staying in, uh, on campus. Ah, ah, we'll be presenting a drama on Sunday, so ah, I will just tell her, ah, I hope they've not given you a bad road again. I will say, my mommy, if they do not give me a bad role, who will they give it to? How many people have understanding about the sensitivity of the roles they are given? I said, I must, even though it is dangerous, I must accept it. A member of our group who had been having good results until then in part three, in physics department, in a particular drama presentation said, Ah, what is it, self? I'm just having the ED. ED. Do you know that semester he had it? So don't be ignorant of the devices of the devil. But you must be confident. I told her, if I don't do it, who, somebody must do it. Somebody must do it. Amen. Amen. You know, at this time that I have no more time left, you know, <laughs> please let us see the practical of what we've been talking about. I've just been told I have no more time. Imagine me now still say, you see, and I'm climbing up and down. Then I'll fade in life and I'll fade in your front. If I struggle in your presence now, it means I've not done anything since I came here. If I go now, it means I've done something. When God says it's your time to leave the earth, are you going to be begging? Or you are going to say, thank you, God. Now your servant can come to you in peace. So I leave you to God. Who is able to keep you? Who is able to sustain you? Who is able to go before you? In Jesus' name. I welcome my wife and sister to do what the Lord has called her to do. We are going to a session that might appear prophetic, if the Lord permits. I want us to be open-minded to God. And allow God to reach your, your life. Because that is the reason for today. In Jesus' name. Thank you.